All right, this is part three of our video series on discovery learning. We have learned from the previous video there are two types of discovery learning, open discovery learning and guided discovery learning. This is what we will talk about today. Guided discovery learning is where the teacher leads students towards a specific goal, helps students understand a concept with the guidance of the teacher. The teacher may provide hints, modeling, questions, or even short bits of instruction. But the teacher has an objective or a purpose in mind first and creates the learning experience to guide students toward discovering that. Research shows, and I don't have it cited, but I can if you want, that guided discovery learning is generally more effective than open discovery learning. However, guided discovery learning is still open-ended yet specific. And like the other type of discovery learning, students often discover things that are far beyond the lesson purpose or objective. But it is explicit. It does involve explicit instruction in that there is a defined objective or purpose. The teacher acts more as a coach to make sure that students get it right or get the necessary information. Some examples of guided discovery learning, of course, Socratic questioning, where the teacher asks questions to stimulate a particular type of thinking to bring students toward a realization. This was originally used to examine moral or philosophical issues. It does, however, require students to have sufficient background knowledge. If you are using Socratic questioning, the questions must be planned in advance to bring students toward a particular place. The second type of guided discovery is discovering a concept or the concept attainment model. And it looks something like this, and this is a general overview. Provide several examples of the concept. Provide non-examples and look for differences. Ask students to identify the relevant or defining attributes of the concept. These are triangles. What do you see that they have the same? Then present information, the name and definition of the concept, and make corrections or additions to students' list of defining attributes. They defined up there, you gave some instruction, and you did some correcting right here. Then you ask students to identify examples and non-examples. Here's a list of triangles, which, or here's a list of shapes. You tell me, which one is the triangle? has to have three sides, etc., etc. And then at the end, create a concept map or graphic organizer. Basic overview, adopt and adapt. Other types of um, uh, uh, guided discovery learning is 3E, where you have an event, an experience, or an example. You have a planned series of events, experience, or example. Students note the common elements with each experience, and then they continue to list the common elements, and then the list grows until, until a concept evolves. An example of that would be to present a series of amphibians, as you present and give examples of various amphibians, students are asked to list some of the defining features or characteristics at the end. See if they can come up with a concept of amphibian. If you have been uh, uh, trained, I want to say trained, if you know the workshop model, if you are a holistic educator and understand reading and writing workshop, that is an example of discovery learning. Students are immersed in the act of authentic reading and writing and they are taught skills as the teacher observes and sees that they are ready for them. And the next one is guided discovery for skills instruction. It looks something like this, adopt and adapt. First, you define a skill, what you want students to learn. Next, you allow time and materials for them to experiment, to mess around. Third, you are a kid watcher. You're watching and observing. 
Fourth, you look for real world problems or activities that utilize that skill. And again, use successive approximation. You don't expect students to have the skill perfectly the first time. And then, number five, you teach the sub-skills as students are ready for them in many lessons. Review and record the progress every day. Ask students for things that worked and things that seemed to work. And this, again, is very much like whole language instruction in that guided discovery for skills instruction, you immerse them in a real task, in the case of writing workshop, in real writing, you give feedback, instruction as needed. You ask them what they've learned about sentences or paragraphs or descriptions or summaries or whatever. When we talk about direct instruction or less direct instruction, it's not either or. Sometimes it's a matter of degree or emphasis. Good Teachers have a variety of strategies. Good teachers do not fixate on any one particular model of instruction or one particular strategy. Discovery learning is not a matter of anything goes. It's not fishing around for something. It's not chaos. It is planned. So good discovery learning, whether it's open discovery or guided discovery learning, takes careful, thoughtful planning.